Hi again, Mark here from TalkingBass.net. Last week, I presented you with a good exercise for improving your overall musicianship by working through the cycle of fourths. This week, I'm going to expand on that overall musicianship topic by showing you how to learn the good old major scale in a way that you might not have tried before, and this is going to have a huge impact on you as you develop as a bass player. As always, the lesson material for this video can be downloaded from TalkingBass.net, so just follow the link in the info below. While you're there, I'd also advise you to check out all the other lessons that I've laid out on the lesson map. All the YouTube videos are systemized into categories so you can work through them much easier. Also, if you subscribe to the site for free, you'll gain access to a load more base practice resources and exclusive content, so uh, check it out. So, most of you probably already know a major scale. It's the first scale that most musicians learn, and on a bass, you're generally going to learn a pattern a fretboard pattern that looks something like this. Okay, so that's a C major scale. And uh, you generally learn that little one octave box shape there starting from the second finger, okay? So, um, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. It gets it under your fingers. You get to see all the intervals laid out there in front of you. And gradually over time, you can add other patterns into the mix and gradually start to work all over the neck. I can't really criticize it because, you know, I've even written a, a book on this, you know, showing all these different patterns, you know, see that over at TalkingBass.net. So, you know, there's nothing really wrong with it per se, but there are inherent problems with learning by pattern alone that you will, uh, you'll start to see as you start to develop as a musician. When you learn by fretboard pattern alone, it means you're limited to seeing the key in terms of a little box shape. Even if you know many, many different patterns for one scale all over the neck, you still have to think of some box pattern somewhere on the bass, and you still have to relate everything back to frets and the fingerboard. Now, I remember being at music college and sitting in theory and harmony lessons, and I'd be visualizing everything in the class via some little mental picture of the fretboard. Now, that can slow you down a lot, and I saw it as a big musical crutch, especially when all the pianists and sax players and other musicians just knew all of the scales and arpeggios and intervals instantly by note. On other instruments, musicians really have no choice but to know the, uh, the notes that are under the fingers. For pianists, it doesn't even matter if you learn the scale as a fingering pattern because the keyboard lays everything out so well that you can't not see them. You know, if you play a D major scale on a piano, you can see the F sharp and C sharp laid out there because of the black notes. On a bass or a guitar, it's a little tougher because the fretboard provides many different ways to play one note. And as pop and rock musicians, we generally learn in a bit of a lazy way. It's all about getting the music or the sound out of the instrument first and foremost, and learning what we're actually doing second. And, you know, often that secondary consideration isn't even a consideration. Now, I won't even bother running through all the different problems that you can have, you know, by knowing scales only by pattern, because I could be listing them all day. Most of them aren't even anything to do with playing scales. It's more of a wide-ranging problem that runs into the practical aspects of learning to play in different keys. But the main thing to know is that there is a solution to the problem that might be easier than you think. Now, obviously, you need to learn all the scales by note name, which can seem like a horrendous big task. Well, it does take practice, but there is a simple set of exercises you can do to help you a lot. And the upside is you can do the exercises anywhere completely away from the instrument. So the solution is to work on something called spelling drills. Now, I first learned about spelling drills via a book called The Jazz Language, and uh, in it, you're encouraged to spell out every scale away from the instrument. Now, you can do this by just reciting your scales in your head or out loud several times each. So as an example, let's have a look at a C major scale. Now, the C major scale has the notes C, D, E, F, G, A, B. Okay, so as a spelling drill, I might recite it four times, you know, actually say it out loud. So that would be C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B. Okay, so just four uh, recitals of that scale. Okay, so and you can do that verbally, you can, you know, say it out loud, or you can just recite it in your head. So the first main exercise that we're going to look at is going to be running through spelling drills on each of the uh, natural major scales. So that's going to be the C major scale, D major scale, E major scale, etc. So we might run through the C major scale like we just did, then we'd move on to the D major scale, 
D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp. D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp. Then onto the E major, F major, etc. Now, the beauty of spelling drills is that we're working purely with notes. So we don't have to think about any instrumental restrictions or make allowances for any playing inadequacies. It's all up there in the mind, so we're working on pure musicianship. Now, if you know a scale or a chord or a tune by note name, and that exists in your head, you can apply it to any instrument. This is why some musicians find it really easy to move between multiple instruments. If you know a tune by note, then you can, all you have to do to learn a new instrument is learn where the notes are, get the basic techniques under your fingers, and then here presto, you'll be able to play that tune. If you know all the chords by note, so if you know that a G minor chord is G, B flat, D, it doesn't matter what instrument you're playing, if you can you know, play the notes in some way, then you can play that chord. So let's first look at a list of the major scales that we're going to be looking at. So here we have them built from natural root notes. So C major, D major, E major, etc. Now for each scale, you'll notice a unique set of sharps or flats. And this is what we have to learn. Now that can seem like a huge undertaking, I know. But don't worry, I'll have you nailing them really, really soon. The first problem people run into is reciting the alphabet from any note other than A. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G, that's easy because we're just reciting the alphabet. But if we were to start that from, let's say, an F, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, it's a little bit harder, it's a little bit more confusing because we're so calibrated to saying A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So F, G, A, you know, even just as a little three-note uh, three se uh, segment there, F, G, A, it just seems a little bit more alien. So the first thing we need to do is look at reciting the alphabetic notes from notes other than A. So let's have a look through those scales again and remove the accidentals, okay? So we'll start with C, okay? Now, C is usually pretty easy because we're generally pretty used to seeing the C major scale. So C, D, E, F, G, A, B, it's not too bad. Most of you are probably going to be okay with that. So let's move on to D. So we're not going to have the accidentals in there yet. So this isn't a, a true major scale. We're just reciting the alphabet from here. So we have D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Okay. Now the big tip that I've got is that you need to split it into two parts. So we're going to have a three and a four. Okay, so we're going to have three letter grouping and a four letter grouping. And all of them are going to be a three and a four apart from one, which will be F, as you'll see in a minute. So when we do that, we break it down and we have two parts. We have D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Okay, so now we're seeing it as two parts. So if we look at that again from D, if you look at that first part, D, E, F, it's a little bit like a word. It's like deaf, like deaf jam or something like that. So we have deaf. Then G, A, B, C, the second part, you know, you just have to learn it from G. But you can see in there another little word, gab, okay? So G, A, B. So we've got two little words to work from, and these are just little tips for trying to memorize this, okay? So this isn't really technical stuff. It's just some, some things to help you memorize. So again from D, we have D, E, F, G, A, B, C. D, E, F, G, A, B, C. So just try reciting that to yourself a few times until you get it. Plus, you know, try writing it down, you know, things like that. Just something to get used to it, okay? So next, let's move on to E. So this time we have E, F, G, A, B, C, D, sorry. <laughs> e, F, G, A, B, C, D, okay? So again, we've got a grouping of three and a grouping of four. So you just have to get used to that E, F, G, okay? You'll get used to that, just run it a few times. And then the second part of it is A, B, C, D. So that's like the alphabet again, you know, starting from A. So again, we've got a little thing to help us there. E, F, G, A, B, C, D. So just run it a few times in your head, say it aloud until you get used to hearing E, F, G, those notes one after another. Next, F. So this time, as I said, we've got a four and a three. So this time we have F, G, A, B, C, D, E. Okay, so a four and a three. So this time, you just have to get used to seeing the F, G, A, B, but then the C, D, E, that's like the first three notes of the C major scale. So again, we're relating it to something else. So um, F, G, A, B, C, D, E. Now G, so again, three and a four. So we have G, A, B, Gab. So that's our little word. 
G-A-B, and then C-D-E-F. So again, that's the, four, the first four notes of the C major scale. So G-A-B, C-D-E-F. Again, we're just relating it to other things. Next up, easy, A. We've got A-B-C, alphabet, D-E-F-G. Okay, A-B-C, D-E-F-G. No problems there. And finally, we have B. So we have B, C, D, E, E, <laughs> E, F, G, A. Okay, so this is the odd one out. This is the one that can be a little tricky because you just have to get used to saying it. Okay, so B, C, D, E, F, G, A. B, C, D, E, F, G, A. So that's the first exercise. Just get used to reciting those. You don't have to go mad. You don't have to be doing it all day, every day. You'll get it quite quickly. It's just to get used to saying the alphabet from a note other than A, okay? That's all it is. And then we can add the accidentals in the major scales. So now let's have a look at that list again of the major scales with the accidentals. So if we start at C again, and this time we've got them, you know, we've still got them grouped in threes and fours. We have a look at that, no sharps or flats in C, so dead simple. So C major scale, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, okay? So next we come on to the D major scale. Now, again, this is where the three and the four comes in handy. So we have D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp. And this is where uh, one of the little patterns comes into play and it's a big tip for memorizing these. Have a look at where those sharps are. We've got a sharp at the end of the first grouping of three, and then we've got a sharp at the end of the second group in a four. So we have D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp. Okay, so if you're used to saying D, E, F, G, A, B, C, it probably seemed quite easy now to just add an accidental at the end. So D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp. Okay, so you want to recite that a few times to yourself and then move on to the E. So E major, once again, three and a four. So we have E, F sharp, G sharp, a, B, C sharp, D sharp. So here we have, once again, sharps at the latter half of each of those groupings. So we have E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B, C sharp, D sharp. So we've got two sharps in both of those groupings. Two in the first one, E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B, C sharp, D sharp. Again, look at where they are. It's at the ends of the groupings, okay? So that's the E, so just run around it a few times. Then we're on to F. Now, this is the odd one out because this is the only one that contains a flat, okay? So, work through it. F, G, A, B flat, C, D, E. See what happened there? We've got the grouping of four, and this is why I've grouped it as a four. We've got the flat at the end of that grouping. So, we're always looking at accidentals at the end of the groupings. So, F, G, A, B flat, C, D, E, okay? Run around that a few times. Next up, G. So this one's dead simple. You just have to think to yourself, G, we've got one sharp, and it's the F sharp right at the end. So again, it's at the end of a grouping. That's really important. So we've got G, A, B, gab, C, D, E, F sharp. Okay, so it's right at the end. We don't have to worry about any accidentals till the end of it. G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp. G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp. And as you learn these, as you recite them over and over, you'll um, start to... Um, see them like words in that sometimes it's that you actually know when it looks wrong. <laughs> so if you were to recite that G major scale, and let's say you got it wrong, and it was G, A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, you would be more inclined to know that it's wrong because of that C sharp in there. You know, it just sound wrong. You'd be thinking, oh, I'm sure there's no C sharp in there. And you'd be right, you know, G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp. Once you've done it a few times, your memory allows you to realize when you've got it wrong, even though you might not know it exactly right, if that makes sense. <laughs> so let's move on to A. Now, A major is a little bit uh, like a cross between the D and the E. So you'll see this. We have A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp. So think of the first part of it, A, B, C sharp, that's like the D major scale when we had D, E, F sharp. So the sharp is at the end of the grouping. And then uh, we have A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp. So we have two sharps at the end of that second part, okay? A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp. So that's a little bit more like E major, okay? So go round and round it a few times. A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp. A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp. And finally, we have B major. Now, on the face of it, when you see this, you can see all these sharps, it seems like a tougher one. And, you know, if you're playing in the key of B major and you see a key signature that has 
five sharps, you generally think, oh, you know, it's a bit of a pain. But it's actually easier because all we do is when we look at those, uh, the grouping of three and four, we just have a natural at the beginning of each one. So we're not actually thinking of the sharps, we're looking more at where the naturals are because we've only got two naturals in there. We've got B, C sharp, D sharp, E, F sharp, G sharp, A sharp. So they're all sharps apart from the first one of the two groupings. E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B, B, sorry, B, C sharp, D sharp, E, F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, okay? B, C sharp, D sharp, E, F sharp, G sharp, A sharp. So that's the natural major scales. So you should just spend some time nailing those. You know, recite each one four times in order, either aloud or in your head. And that's the spelling drill. There's only seven of them to memorize, so it shouldn't take too long. Just try to get into the habit of doing the drill whenever you're doing nothing, you know, whenever you're bored. You could be sat on a train, sat waiting for a bus, watching TV, whatever, you know, laid in bed on a night. Just try to get used to doing them at the times, you know, when you're bored, when you've got nothing to do. Once you get into that habit of thinking, oh, I'm not doing anything. Oh, I know. I'll do a spelling drill. Just run through them. And it won't take long. Like I say, there's only seven of them. You just keep going through them. And before you know it, you'll have them memorized. So once you start to feel comfortable with reciting those scales, we can try applying it to the bass as a bit of a secondary exercise. So uh, all we're going to do is we're going to recite the scale and play it. But the catch is we're not going to play the scale and then say it. We're not going to do them at the same time because then you're just going to fall into, you know, old patterns. So what we want to do is we want to say the note first, then find the note, just find a familiar version of that note, and then just play it. So um, let's try something like an F major scale, okay? So I won't try C because the C major scale is too familiar. So let's try F. So F, there's an F, then recite the next one, G, so find a G. A, B flat, so we find a B flat, C, find a C, D, find a D, E, there's an E, and F. Okay, so at no point there was I playing the scale at the same time as, uh, as reciting it, I was finding the notes afterwards. And, uh, and then you could just continue, so once I got to the top, F, G, A, B flat, C, then we could continue up, D, E, F, so, you know, no matter where you are on the neck, you can use this system. So if I was maybe down here, let's say um, F, G, A, B flat, C, D, E, F, G, A, B flat, C, D, E, and F. Okay, so I'm not relying on any patterns there. I was just, you know, I just found myself in a place and just carried on you know, just went through the scale, okay? So you can try that with every single one of those scales. So if we tried something like a B major scale, let's try that down here. So we could have B, C sharp, D sharp, E, F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, and then B. And like I say, you could continue in two octaves or whatever. So that's how to apply them to begin with, using familiar notes. You know, I know that I went all the way up the neck with it, but if you're only confident with notes in certain areas, just try and find the notes that you know, even if you have to drop down an octave for certain ones. So even if you were playing, let's say, a B major, B, C sharp, D sharp, and then let's say that you didn't know that was an E, even though you, you should. <laughs> but let's say you didn't, but you know there's an E down there at the open E, you could go down there. So then we get to E, F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, B. Okay, so just start trying to play through those scales on the bass. So you can see here that we're breaking out of this box pattern mentality. Now there's nothing wrong with patterns, you know, I use patterns all the time, I think most people do, especially if you're playing really fast, you know, you might not have time to be thinking, oh, E, F sharp, you know, all that kind of stuff, you're still going to be using patterns. You can do this alongside your pattern playing, you know. All it does is it just adds another string to your bow so that you're going to be able to, if you know, if you were to, if you got lost and you're in a certain area, you can rely on your notes, uh, on the notes that you know, you know, so if you're in an area of the neck and you're thinking, oh, I don't know my scale pattern here or something like that, you can use those notes to get you back in, you know, and then eventually what will happen is that you don't really differentiate between the patterns and the notes because you know both.
You know, once that happens, that's, that's the ultimate way that you, you don't see any difference between the two. So now as an extra exercise, let's try playing the scale on one string. And this ties into the lesson that we had last week because it really forces you to know the notes on your neck. So last time we just worked through the cycle of fourths, this time we're actually playing a full scale, okay? So let's just try, uh, let's say an A major. Okay, so we're going to play with one finger and we're going to just play it up and down the string. So let's start, uh, we'll, we'll try it on the E string. So start there on an A, so that's the fifth fret of the E string. And then we just work up through the notes of that A major. So before you do it, recite it in your head. So A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp. Maybe recite that a few times just to make sure that you're okay. And then work through it. So we have A, B, C sharp, D, E. E, F sharp, G sharp, A, okay? So you have to know the notes on that neck as you work through. And I don't want you to just use patterns to do it because that completely goes against the whole point of this exercise. There's no point in doing it if you do that because you might as well just learn the pattern. This isn't about patterns. If you want to learn about patterns, there's plenty of other lessons that I've got on YouTube and over at Talking Bass and plenty of exercises all over the, you know, all over YouTube, all over all these different books. You'll find everything you need to know about patterns. This isn't about patterns. This is about learning the notes on the neck and learning the actual notes, uh, the note names in the scales. So try that again. So with one finger, so that stops us from thinking of, you know, whole step, whole step, whole step, whole step, those kind of things. So we've got A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, and back to A. Okay, so let's try, um, let's try a different one. Let's try G. Okay, so start there on uh, the third fret of the E string. So we've got G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, and G. Okay, so by doing this, because you already know the order of the notes alphabetically from, the, uh, from different notes, you know, as we tried earlier on in the lesson, it kind of makes things a little bit easier for memorizing the notes on the neck because if you only knew the alphabetic notes as A, B, C, D, E, F, G, you know, you're not going to start seeing things like G, A, B or E, F, G as, you know, stepwise motion. When you're looking through a scale like this, because we know it's GAB, you know, G, A, B and then C, D, E, F sharp, it actually helps with memorizing the notes in there. So. Um, so again, it's really, really good exercise, this for learning the notes on the neck. As well as trying them on the E string, you can try them on the A string, the D string, and the G string. So let's try the, um, uh, the D major scale, and we'll start on the, A uh, on the A string. So starting at that D there, fifth fret. So we'll work through it. Just work through it in your head, uh, first of all. D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp. Okay, so D, E, find an E. F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, D. Okay, and then we can try some on the D string. So let's try an E major scale. So starting on the second fret there of the D string. E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B, C sharp, D sharp. Okay, so E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B, C sharp, D sharp, and back to E, okay? So you have to know the notes on the neck and you have to know the notes of the scale. And now finally, let's try a B major scale starting on the G string. So just working up and down that G, uh, the G string. So we start on a B there, fourth fret, then work up. So we have, uh, before we play it, we've got B, C sharp, D sharp, E, F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, okay? So remember where the naturals are, B and E. So we've got B, C sharp, D sharp, E, F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, B. Okay, so we just run through each of those scales starting on a different string. So there's quite a bit of material there for you to run through just based on those seven basic major scales. And, um, you know, don't worry about the fact that you know your patterns already and, you know, you're worried about just, oh, I don't want to only think of notes. You know, I like my patterns. You know, don't worry about any of that. This is just additional information that is going to help you develop as a musician and it'll help you to 
Um, break out of those box patterns, but also just know your fretboard a lot, lot better. So your overall musicianship will increase, okay? So the next step is to learn the other major scales in there, okay? So we have things like the D-flat major scale, E-flat major scale, etc. So we've got the flats and the sharps. And um, you can also learn all your arpeggios, intervals, minor scales, whatever it is. You can use these spelling drills to learn any of those parts of uh, any bits of the musical uh, material. So with things like uh, arpeggios, you might take something like a C major triad, for instance, C, E, G. And we can have a spelling drill based on that. So C, E, G, C, E, G. And then D major, uh, sorry, D major arpeggio, D, F sharp, A. D, F sharp, A, and you just learn the spellings of each of these things. Now, uh, over at TalkingBass.net, in the library section, so you have to have the free subscription, you just subscribe for free, and then you go to the library, there's a free ebook in there uh, that uh, I think I've called the uh, Spelling Manual or something like that. So if you look at that, there are lots and lots of different lists of things that you can memorize. So there's all the major scales in there, all spelled out for you with the flats, the sharps, everything. Uh, there's all the arpeggios, there's intervals, there's a whole host of different bits of bass material, musical material for you to memorize. All laid out, so all the notes are there. You don't have to sit there working them out, they're all put there for you. So I would strongly advise to get that spelling uh, book. So try to make these spelling drills a part of your daily practice away from the instrument. I mean, you can apply them to the bass as I showed you, but just try doing them whenever you're bored, whenever you're sat there, you know, watching TV, laid in bed, anything like that. Just try doing these little mental exercises. Next lesson, I am going to go through the flats and the sharps uh, because that's, as well as doing the spelling drills, it really, really helps with learning about keys and you'll learn a little bit about why we don't use sharp keys so much because of the double sharps in there. So a few little theory things will start to make more sense. So that'll be next lesson. So check out TalkingBass.net and uh, sign up for free and uh, I'll see you later.